and I'm very happy to present our paper um, from last year's Mikai here at BBM now. It is based on a collaboration between the Pattern Recognition Lab um, and Advanced Therapies at Siemens South Veneers. So, all right, so um, also at BVM, we often strive for fully automatic solutions to simplify certain tasks and to improve outcomes. And one example that is not directly related to medical imaging is um, automated driving, where safety is of similar concern as in medical imaging. But in practice, we often see cases where our uh, automatic approaches don't work as expected and where we see failure cases. For example, in the case of this misclassified stop sign. Until we get our algorithms to work perfectly, we need some way to deal with these um, failure cases and to um, develop approaches that where we can easily complement these shortcomings by user knowledge. And this way we can combine the benefits of an automatic approach and the knowledge of the user in um, the most, uh, in the best way. So today I want to talk about a method that allows to do this for deformation modeling during endovascular aortic repair. Um, we've already seen a very nice introduction of what endovascular aortic repair is and what the context is. And currently, um, the standard practice is to have a preoperative CT that is segmented and that can then be overlaid onto the intraoperative fluoroscopic X-ray images. This way, the preoperative information can be used for guidance. Um, this fusion allows to already reduce the amount of contrast agent radiation as well as procedure time. However, as you can see in this example, the instruments that are introduced during this pr procedure actually deform the vasculature. So we see a considerable um, deformation and this reduces the value of the fusion um, considerably. Especially at vessel bifurcations that you can see here um, highlighted with a contrast injection, the preoperative information where the corresponding landmark is here uh, denoted in, in blue does no longer match the true intraoperative situation. So um, this is an issue, especially for critical points like stand placement. And to recover the accuracy of the fusion, we propose a method, method to model this deformation with the following main goals in mind and the specific uh, and the following clinical requirements um, in mind. So the correction should work with no or minimal additional contrast agent, meaning that we don't need a contrast injection that shows the entire aorta, but that we require only a small targeted injection with, um, for example, diluted contrast agent. For the, furthermore, we want to keep the user interaction to a minimum such that the method is still easy to use and can be integrated into existing clinical workflows. To achieve this, we propose uh, the following pipeline for intraoperative deformation correction. First and foremost, we want to use information that is detectable even without contrast injection. So this includes the shape and the course of stiff wires and catheters, so similar, similar to what was presented in the previous talk. Um, the segmentation and the reconstruction of the 3D shape can be either done from two uncontrasted views or it can be estimated uh, from a single proje projection um, using a method that we actually also presented at BVM some time ago. Um, next, we obtain the user input in form of a single annotation or a single click on the target landmark um, that you can see marked here um, by the yellow star um, in the fluoroscopic image. Based on the shape of the instrument and this landmark information in 2D, we can derive constraints for the intraoperative vessel shape. This way, we don't need to know the full um, shape of the vessel in the 2D projection. And it allows us to formulate a constrained optimization problem. Lastly, we compute the intraoperative vessel surface by deforming the preoperative vessel shape using an as rigid as possible or short Arab deformation uh, modeling approach that allows us to approximate the elastic properties of the vessel in an efficient manner and still obtain a plausible deformation in 3D. So for the remainder of this talk, I will focus on these two steps and assume that we have the 3D shape of the inserted instruments given. So as a first step, I would like to shortly define the Arab energy as introduced by Zakina and Alexa. 
The surface of the vessel is represented by a triangle mesh and connected center lines S. And the goal is to define the deformed uh, surface mesh, mesh S such that it matches the actual intraoperative vessel configuration. P and P prime pre represent the vertex positions of the original and the deformed um, mesh respectively. And for each vertex, based, based on this information, for each vertex, we can define the so-called one ring neighborhood centered on that vertex, as you can see here. So the Arab energy for each cell is zero if the transformation can be expressed by a rotation matrix Ri. And if this is not possible, then this um, non-matching or this that the fact that we can't find a rotation results in a non-zero penalty. Um, optimizing the Arab energy then allows us to find a deformation that maximizes the local rigidity to, uh, of the surface after deformation, and it allows us to model a plausible physical behavior of the vessel lumen. To adapt the surface to the intraoperative deformation, certain constraints have, of course, to be introduced. And these can be derived from the intraoperative instruments and from the landmark information. So first, let's have a look at the instruments. Um, you can see them here highlighted in green. And we extend the Arab energy as follows. So first, we determine corresponding points between the vessel center line and um, the instrument. You can see them marked here by arrows. And since the instruments during EVA are quite stiff, we can locally approximate them um, with, with a line. This means that the, we can use the correspondences to derive constraints that penalize the uh, distance between a deformed centerline point PC prime to the tangential GC at the corresponding position along the instrument. And this effectively, so this strategy really uh, enables the mesh to locally slide along the instruments, along the instrument during the optimization. The um, influence of this penalty is controlled by a factor lambda def. And we can also integrate additional constraints that model, for example, the incision point in the femoral artery um, to, to constrain the problem further. Now to the second um, class of yeah, constraints, um, the landmarks. So the landmark represents additional information that we want to integrate um, into the deformation. And the landmark that we are, landmarks that we are interested in are, for example, vessel bifurcations, again marked here by the star. So let M prime be the selected landmark in the image that is identified by the click and let PLM be the corresponding in, uh, preoperative position in the preoperative CT. Then this information constrains the intraoperative position PLM prime to be located on the projection ray between the camera center of the X-ray system and the annotated landmark. And this again, so basically on this line here, and this again allows us to identify a line, uh, uh, identify a line constraint now based on our 2D annotation. So note that we make three assumptions here. First, we assume that our CT and fluoroscopy are registered. Secondly, we assume that we know the projection geometry to derive this ray. And thirdly, we assume that we know what preoperative landmark we are referring to with this annotation. But these um, assumptions are typically fulfilled for the application that we have in mind. Okay, so we have the methods all set up and I would like to continue with the evaluation. We have 13 patients as the basis for our, our evaluation who received an intraoperative cone beam CT during an endovascular aortic repair. Um, in this cone beam CT, we were able to identify the 3D position of the right and left iliac bifurcation after the insertion of the main stand graft system. Um, so we have a ground truth position of these important anatomical landmarks. Furthermore, since we know the projection geometries, we can uh, forward project the ground truth um, to generate basically virtual clicks from arbitrary angulations and also have matching images here. Um, we registered the preoperative and the intraoperative data by a bone-based registration with a focus on the lower vertebrae of the spine. 
So this rigid registration allows us to estimate the baseline error before the uh, deformation correction in addition to providing an initial alignment. So we evaluate three different errors. Of course, we are interested in the 3D error. So between the predicted position after deformation and the ground truth position in the chromium CT. And we further split this error into an error parallel to the image plane. So where we have an annotation and the error along the projection direction where the deformation is only constrained indirectly um, by the annotation that we have here. Okay, so um, we have three different experiments. In the first one, we simply used the 3D ground truth shape as we could um, acquire it from two independent or two, two projection images, uncontrasted projection images. Um, and we choose a 30 degree left or right anterior oblique angulation of the CRM system. So compared to a rigid registration error, uh, a rigid registration where we have an error of 11.6 millimeters, we see that the fully automatic, uh, fully automatic approach is able to reduce this to 4.3. And we are even lower um, with our proposed approach with 1.9 millimeters. What is, what is important here is that the in-plane error is reduced to 0.5 millimeters. So there is basically no remaining error visible to the physician. For a single view wire shape reconstruction, we see that there is an increase in error. However, this is mostly visible. Um, this, is, this is mostly visible in uh, orthogonal to, to the image plane and the um, correction in the image stays consistently well. And we can also show that this error is consistent um, across different views. So only for very oblique or very um, uh, uh, strong cranial caudal angulations, we see a huge error. All right, I would quickly take the time to, to show you really um, also qualitative results that also nicely highlight how we want to, uh, or how the workflow here works. So you can see here an undeformed overlay where there's a considerable mismatch between the intraoperative position and the um, preoperative position. With our proposed approach, um, we can nicely correct this by simply clicking on this one point. And you can see that the deformation stays correct even when the CRM system, the angulation of the CRM system is changed. Okay, so let me quickly step, skip this one here. So this is actually also interoperative, um, a real interoperative case where our approach com uh, combined with um, other approaches that were developed during my PhD um, also works very nicely. Okay, two, Quickly summarize this. Um, we see that there are some failure cases in automatic approaches. So having semi-automatic approaches as a backup can help tremendously. And we provide an easy to use, fast and um, fa fast and easy to use method that requires only a single interaction and performs intraoperative deformation correction in under six seconds, using only a single um, image to obtain an excellent correction in the working view. And um, we can extend this approach by automatic detection of landmarks or to investigate more complex deformation models. So with this, I would like to thank my co-authors as well as our collaborators on this. And I'm very happy to answer your questions and discuss the approach further uh, during the discussion session. Thank you.